Hello and welcome to World Civilizations 2. Um, we are actually doing our world leaders today. Um, so this is your world leader segment. And you do have a world leaders uh, sheet um, that is in your materials. I believe that's for the first week and you can print it out or you can just type over it and make sure you send it in at the end of the semester for I think it's 50 points. So um, this is number seven, eight, and nine and you simply fill it out, seven, eight, and nine. Um, we've done leaders one through six. All right, here is the um, here is what we are looking at today, um, and I just want to really encourage you. Um, this whole situation or this whole um, segment is to get you to marry the past and the present. So here we have the world leaders for Morocco: uh, Sadiddin, Sadiddin Othmani. Um, I believe he's the president and prime minister of Morocco. Really interesting stuff there. Then we have um, Egypt, um, Abdel Fattah El Sisi, uh, Burundi, uh, Pierre Nakaranzizi. Um, Burundi is what we would consider on your history analysis words, it would be considered um, an underdeveloped nation. Um, the reason that I chose Burundi um, obviously, I choose them for different reasons, is because um, someone asked me what the poorest nation was in the world, and they're right now considered the poorest nation in the world. So these are all um, countries from Africa that we might not know very much about, and so that's what we're going to take a look at today, the world leaders from these places. All right, so the first thing I want to do is to show you um, where these are. So... Um, here you have Morocco. We are going to study Morocco. We're going to look at Morocco. I believe Morocco is first. And then Egypt, and Egypt is right here. You need to understand that Morocco is really uh, very, very close to Spain. This is considered the Mediterranean Rim. And you have just all kinds of ethnicities. Uh, looks very different than the interior of Africa. And what you have to understand is Burundi is kind of landlocked in the middle of, um, of Africa. So it's right here, Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda. Let's go back out. Um, Kenya, so it's right here. So the Congo, Sudan, Tanzania. All right, so we've gotten that. We are gonna start with, um, this is the Prime Minister and President of Morocco. I'm going to put myself over here now. Okay. All right. Here's some pictures of him, and I'll tell you a little bit about him in a second. He is from Morocco. And what we know about him is, um, first of all, Morocco, the capital is Rabat, but um, we all, all probably know one of the famous or larger cities in Morocco is Casablanca. So um, this man is both the prime minister and the president. Um, there was a disagreement with the king of Morocco, which is really interesting. The king of Morocco, I also have a picture of, he is Mohammed VI. And what's really cool about being the king of Morocco is your birthday is considered a national holiday as soon as you are sworn in. So here I have um, the picture of the king of Morocco. His name is Mohammed VI. Um, and his birthday, like we just said, is August 21st. And it is a royal holiday as soon as you are um, made the king and you take over the monarchy. Again, um, it is kind of sketchy. You know, they used to have a prime minister and a president, which a lot of times the president is maybe the head of the parliament, because I know it's confusing to have both. Um, but the king had a disagreement with the former prime minister, and he got rid of him. So he's made um, Saadidine Othmani the, um, the head of uh, Moroccan government, along with himself. Okay, the next one that we're going to do is Egypt, I believe. We'll take a look at some pictures. This is um, the president of Egypt, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. 
Um, there was um, some really uh, um, military upheaval, some massacre that, that took place called the Raba Massacre in 2013, and a lot of people began to write a petition and asked um, El Sisi to run for president. Um, and so he finally did. He was in the armed forces, um, and you can serve four years renewable once. Um, what's really neat about this man, um, Al Sisi, and let's look at some pictures of him. Okay. All right. He's with the Chinese president. He's with um, our own president. Um, some different pictures of him. Okay. Um, something that's really interesting about him is he grew up in a section of Egypt. It's called the Gamalea um, area. And it's where Muslims, Jews, and Christians all live together and they get along very well. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of times the media or society or um, just what we hear in stereotypes, we think that Muslims, Jews, and Christians cannot get along. And actually, it's not true, according to history. And there are several examples, several um, more examples that they get along and then they don't. Because if you understand... Um, Islamic history, and we'll talk more about it um, later on. Um, when you know the Muslim kingdoms were getting larger and larger and larger, they did not want everyone to convert because then no one would pay tax. So if you wanted to be Jewish or Christian in a Muslim country, they wanted you to stay that, and you just had to pay a small um, tax to choose the religion that you wished. And so they really did not want to forcibly. Um, convert you, which you actually, the more we read about world history and Christianity, it was forced religion and forced, um, it was, a lot of times it was forced conversion, especially with the explorers and the conquerors. Um, you know, a lot of times it was um, to, you know, the Aztecs or the Incas or the, you know, Native Americans um, in America and the U.S., it was either convert or die immediately. Like, immediate conversion or immediate death. So um, this is really different from what we're taught, but that's why we study history because there's so many stereotypes out there and stereotypes kill people. They hurt people. Um, they bring divides. All right, so we just studied um, Egypt. All right, so we've taken care of that one. So the last one we're gonna do is Burundi. All right. And his name is Pierre Nukuranzizi. We'll go with that. Um, and the reason I, I picked Burundi, I think I told you, was because someone asked me um, which country is considered the poorest in the world. And that's the one that came up uh, when I did a little bit of research. So it would be considered an underdeveloped nation. We no longer call them third world um, just because, you know, the U.S. is so young, you know, 200 years. In, in, in 100 years, we could be underdeveloped. In 100 years, we could be developing. You know, if, if you look in through, throughout history, the switching and the changing and the growing and the, you know, the different status economically um, changes all the time. So that's the new historical terms, and they are in your history analysis um, worksheet and videos. Okay, so here is um, the president. Really interesting about him is his mother was Tutsi and Protestant, and his father was a Hutu and Catholic. And um, the Hutus um, and the Tutsis don't get along, and, and this country is right next to Rwanda, and there was just thousands upon thousands just slaughtered in an ethnic cleansing. Um, so it's really important to understand that this man is half and half, and that probably actually really um, contributed to him gaining power and control over his country. Um, really, and a really great perspective, having a mother and a father. Now his father was killed in an ethnic cleansing attack um, in 1972, so he's also suffered. You know, a lot of these uh, world leaders, it's amazing to me, um, the suffering that they've went through or that they've gone through and, um, you know, just the backgrounds that they've come uh, from to lead their countries and to try and make a difference in the world. Um, what's really interesting about this man too, Pierre, was once a professor of sports um, medicine or sports um, 
administration. He was one, a professor before he got into politics. And later on, something that's very strange about his um, presidency is that there, they were using, uh, militants in the government were using jogging, actually jogging as a way to get together and it looked like they were being healthy and jogging and then they would get together and they'd band together and they would have violent protests and they would cause trouble and violence. So he actually banned jogging. He extended his own term, which is a little um, suspect, very much a suspect, because he's only supposed to have a five-year term, I believe, two times. Um, and he shut down the media, which um, in history, when the media is attacked to the point it's shut down or rights are taken away from the media, we get really nervous as historians because that's what we have seen as a pattern in several instances where there were, you know, democracies taken into tyrannies. Um, just super interesting um, to study, uh, you know, whether it's Stalin or Hitler, but, um, you know, he shut down the media, which is not a good thing because that is the free speech. Okay. All right, so he's been in power since 2005, and obviously it's 2018, and um, that's more than two five-year terms. Okay, so um, those are your three world leaders for this week, and I hope that if you see them on the news or if you see them in the mall that you would recognize them. Thanks.